Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst and today we are getting into the chapter 2 in more details with the next topic that is 2.6 basis path testing. Now here we are just talking about as a basis path testing where we are exploring how exactly path testing can be helpful in order to derive number of test cases in order to have maximum coverage. Now there are certain basic principles which need to be followed in order to apply path testing here. So on the screen right now you'll see a lot of instruction provided to you in order to apply technique. But in nutshell, when you talk about the technique path testing, it is all about covering a baseline path in order to have different deviations and at least the main path and a different path should be tested once. So not all the test cases, not the all possible combination, but at least two critical or the difference whenever the condition is changed or decision is identified, that test case must be tested here. So just quickly creating an overview to understand what exactly path testing is. It's a general consist of identifying paths through the code and then creating tests to cover them. Conceptually, it would be useful to test every unique path through the system. In any non-tribal system, however, the number of test cases could become excessively large due to the nature of looping structures. So, it's not recommended that you try with everything possible, but if there is a decision change, you can actually look forward to that. Now here, this is the technique how exactly it is applied when it comes to a scenario. So let me quickly tell you what is the approach. First, convert a given pseudocode into a control flow graph that is a flowchart for the given specification item. Note that this may also be first step in performing control flow analysis. Second, select a baseline path which is the most basic path where you actually your program travels through and then look at the different deviations. And this must not be absolutely an exceptional path which might be just a excuse to remove other test cases. So you just have to take a baseline path in order to pass through the code. Then generate the second path by changing the outcome of the first decision on the path. The very first decision which come across, you must look into that and see the other outcome of that. So that's one thing to be taken care of. Number four, generate the third path by again starting with the baseline path and changing the outcome of the second decision on the path. Now that's the how that's the way how your branching of the path testing must be done. Now five, generate further paths by changing each of the outcomes of the baseline path and then count the number of test cases. Once all the decision outcomes on the baseline path have been covered, apply the same approach to the subsequent path until all decision outcomes uh, in the specification have been exercised. So basically putting it all together when it comes to the path testing, it is more important to see that various paths are at least covered once so that the scenario is, can be called as covered 100% in order to see if a user finds a different ways to reach the destination, how exactly the conditions can be and how we can assure that the user can have a safe ride on these paths. So let's understand the same with few different examples in order to understand how the examination questions can be as well as how to apply this technique in reality. Alright, so here is a very first example of applying basis path testing with a Boolean table or a table with conditions. Now I've just tried to make it simple for you in order to understand how this can be uh, applied on a given table of decisions like this. Now here I'm considering the very first condition as A and B or C and I've just replaced A, B, C in simple example like A is paper, B is pen and C is pencil. So if you just see this example to understand it better, you need either pen or pencil and a paper in order to write something. And that's how the table will be created to have possible outcomes as the outcome will be measured as 2 raised to 1 where n is the number of conditions so we will have 8 possible outcomes. But when it comes to path testing, it's really crucial to identify that if considering a parent input and then coming to the output, uh, how various ways of uh, difference can be created and then you pick the number of test cases accordingly. 
Now the very first thing is of course a generic path or baseline path is test number one which is true 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 if any one of or all the things are true you will have it true but possibly may not be required to be tested why you may take it as a base path but you have to change the condition to see that if there are different outcomes which need to be tested because if you consider the test number one you may have to anyways alternatively consider the other test cases as well so we may not look forward to have a straight path because that will be covered anyways so what we take is the very first one as test case number two that is the paper is true pen is true and pencil is false so what if a person has the paper and tries with pen and can he write it or not yes he can write it whereas test case number three is another good example to check at least once with pencil as well that means paper and pencil will he able to write or not and then one test case can be taken from the other side by changing the decision that is on the a that means what if the person has pen and pencil both but doesn't have a paper can he write or not because there is an and condition in between that so other side of it should also be tested so that means to have 100% path testing coverage you should have at least these three test cases that is 2 3 and 5 to be executed or minimum number of test cases as 3 in order to have 100% path coverage because these are the various ways of it but it's not the same way when it is to programming based when it comes to a program or pseudo code it might be slightly different because we may have different ways of coming out of it let's take another example here now here I'm taking another example which talks about a simple example which we considered in previous tutorials as well where there is a statement P which should be printed and then if this is a condition if further there is a second condition then statement Q and so on and everything so you can follow the program or probably pause the video for a moment to understand the relationship between the pseudo code provided to you and the flow chart created here so you may pause the video right now and analyze it for a moment before proceeding ahead now to apply path testing on this it is very important to follow the principles to apply the technique you first of all start with the base path which is this one where you start with statement P and come to the condition A and then you may start with the true path first so that is here and then you see another condition so there is a deviation or decision is made and then you may take one path like this so we got one path to check the possible outcome but again considering the base path you see there is also a possibility that the person may come to the false side of it and have a different output in order to get the result so he may have a different result thus you have to take another set of tests here so second now look at the next one what if the base condition itself changes that means instead of being true it is false then it moves to this side but again we do have a condition here that is C and what if it is true it goes this way and comes out like this but that's not all you do have another option of a user going to the false side by meeting the false of the baseline criteria as well that is decision A and decision C both are being false then you come out like this and then join here with the statement V so now four. so if you see here in this kind of program you would have four paths required to be tested because the four distinct paths have different decisions made at different points so the base remains the same that is the baseline of the code that is condition A but various decision right from there or alternatively further in the branch is made thus it should be covered so to have 100% path coverage here you must have four test cases at least to cover them now that's what is more important when it comes to path testing and applying on a different type of examples or different kind of programs now that was a quick example to understand how path testing can be applied to different types of examples or different type of questions in the examination and hope you had got a good clarity on that 
I would request you to follow different examples, different questions in order to have better confidence to apply this technique and understand more about it before you can hit the examination. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding the content. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.